What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto. Um, I've got some lines pulled up on the chart. They don't really mean anything. Um, it's just something that we can go over together and and look at. Um, so let's look at it. Uh, all right, let's see here. So these, all these lines, I've taken the liberty to place. These are all Memorial Days that have happened in Bitcoin's past. The yellow ones kind of match with what, what I'm trying to talk about. The white ones, not so much. They're 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 outliers, I'd say. But but Memorial Day, I've noticed at least the past few years, but I didn't know it was actually further back than that. But we've had some manipulation in the price action leading into Memorial Day. Not much. It's not normally much, but but enough to go off of. So like you can see here, leading into Memorial Day itself, the weekend of, and Memorial Day counts as part of the weekend, by the way, we get this nice little manipulated, in my opinion, bull trap. And I say manipulated because there's not a lot of volume. We got a sizable move, the most that we've seen in over a month. And, you know, it, to me, it just feels false. It feels false. I'm very confident that this is a bull trap and we'll go over why, but I wanna just try to make this quick. Um, you know, we go to the next Memorial Day here, same thing. Start of the weekend, Saturday, we had this fake move up, um, topping the day after Memorial Day, actually very low volume. This actually was above average volume on Memorial Day, to be fair, but decreasing volume still. More volume came in once we dumped, that should be a sign, and then even more volume came in as we dumped lower. Um, this, to me, looks very similar to what we're seeing uh, right now. You know, it looks, it looks very similar to that um, in almost every aspect. And then if we go over here, you know, I think this is the same, just like to the opposite effect, maybe. No, okay, so it is the same. So we got, this one kind of continued a little bit more of a fake out um, before, you know, going down and going lower. To be fair, this is kind of a whole sideways range, but we did have on the Sunday and, and the set, I guess, you know, it, it's kind of a wig wag, but Sunday and Monday, both days where the stock markets were closed, we had a pump with no volume coming in, only leading us to a top that was shortly then blown off. Um, and we proceeded to go lower over the coming month, month and a half. Um, and then, you know, this one here, this is the one that's to the opposite effect. So the manipulation now is to the downside, that the false move was to the downside. Um, you know, Saturday, Sunday, we had a dump, very low volume. Um, you know, looks looks bearish here. Memorial Day, nothing like super bullish at all. It, it's actually kind of exactly like what we're experiencing right now, where we have this little little bounce off the mid zone here, and it looks like we might go lower. Um, but then, as the days went on, you know, we we proved the other way. The volume came into the upside. I guess the volume came into the downside too over here. But you know, we were we were moving sideways largely here, and it was the beginning of an uptrend. But this this is manipula not manipulation, but false moves to the downside this time. Uh, the weekend leading into Memorial Day. And then, I don't know, so that's like the last four in a row. This is the fifth one right here. We had, you know, false move coming into Memorial Day, no volume, and sell down. And this was in the midst of a, of a bull rally, I would say. You know, overall, this is an uptrend. But, of course, where, where we're about to turn around in the midst of this consolidation, when we're at the height of it, where it would be the worst time to buy would happen on this weekend. That's a long weekend where there's there's less volume uh, to be traded because traditional markets are closed. Um, so I, I've just noticed that Bitcoin does this a lot where it'll, it'll if, if there's a holiday, not just Memorial Day, but if there's a holiday that causes the traditional markets to be closed an extra day, like we get an extended weekend, maybe it's a three day weekend or whatever. Um, I've noticed time and time again that, that sometimes stuff happens on that weekend sometimes counter to the trend and then the real trend resumes afterwards um this time i would say this is not counter to the trend but this is counter to what happened afterwards there was no volume here this this pump up was fake this was a fake pump and then we you know the real the real uh volume brought it back down to where price should be we really just consolidated in this range for a while until you know until we went up higher um Anyways, I'm going to stop talking about that. What I want to talk about really is today, today, the day after Memorial Day, and why I'm so confident that this is that this is a, uh, a bull trap. Besides the fact that it looks like a bull trap, just like this one did, just like this one did, besides it really has the same characteristics as uh, some of the ones that we went over just a second ago, um, if we're looking at it, you know, I, I was saying that to confirm this to be a bull trap, I would like to see half of this candle, if not two thirds of this candle be engulfed. Um, it, if the whole thing gets engulfed, of course that would, you know, that'd be an indication, but you know, I was looking for this to be a bigger candle down uh, yesterday. 
But today, what is supporting the theory and, and the, uh, the opinion that I have that this is a bull trap is the fact that, yes, more volume came in yesterday than this big, the, the most volume that came in in the last like week, I guess technically, on the, let's see, it's May. I, I guess technically it was down here on this bottom here. This was the most volume we saw, just a little bit more. But look at, look at how much smaller this body is. Look at how small these bodies are. You've got volume right here that's equivalent to the volume that we saw in this candle here, but this candle is this much bigger. That doesn't make sense. And then we get a lot, we get more volume than this candle, but we have a smaller, that, that to me doesn't make sense. And it happened at the top. I wouldn't be surprised. We have five hours, 43 minutes left. I wouldn't be surprised if volume continued to increase as we continue to move down. That in my opinion will be very uh, validating to the fact that this is a bear trap, a bull trap. Um, and if you look at the candle itself, the top of this candle literally went to where the open and close was of these previous two candles. It tested it, got rejected from it, and now you know we're continuing to go lower. Um, I really do think I really do think that this little and look at that bearish engulfing candle. We have an hour and forty-two minutes left in this one, but bearish engulfing candle with a decent bit of volume. Only only these bearish candles here toward the tops are getting all the volume. So there's there's a lot of selling going on in my opinion. And you know what good's talking about selling and buying? I get it. You know, every sell is a buy, every buy is a sell. You're you're buying from somebody who's selling, you're selling to somebody who's buying. This, to be completely technical, is not um, is not a higher high. This is a lower high. But with how far away this RSI is, like you can see right here, we had this green candle, which is a lot lower than this one, and the peak was so much below this, right? But you've got this over here, this peak which is above this peak to be fair, and the RSI is way lower. I, this isn't traditional bearish divergence, but I would say I would consider this almost to be like bearish divergence. I would, I, and, and what, the reason I would consider it that way is I would, I would expect it to pull similar moves that we would get from a traditional uh, standpoint of bearish divergence. It's close enough. This is technical analysis. We don't do close enough. So we, do, you know, we, try to, we try to keep it technical, um, but to be fair, you know, with, with how far away the RSI is, I would still call this some sort of divergence. It's not traditional bearish divergence by any means, but we did reject the overbought zone. We are below the bullish control zone, looking like we want to go below the 50. You know, just as finding support on the overbought zone here was a good good thing for price and it sent us up, finding a rejection on it here is not going to be a good thing. And we you know we're only on our second candle after that rejection. So, and this was a bearish engulfing candle. Um, after like a pretty sizable bullish candle on the four hour. So, you know, and the volumes coming in, I, I'm very, very much convinced that this is a bull trap. And whenever we see a bull trap, it's always a good time, in my opinion, to take fibs, take the extension. And I, I would almost bet my money that, that we're going to blow through the 618 and that we're gonna see an extension. And the extension would follow anywhere as like 25,000 to potentially 23,752. Probably more around 25,000 to 24,000, someone in there or somewhere in there before we get any kind of bounce. Um, you know, we could just blow straight through it. We could go lower. I don't know. I personally am expecting prices to go around 22 to 23K. That doesn't mean we can't bounce before then. It doesn't mean it has to be in a straight line. Um, uh, da, da, da. Yeah. Anyways, um, my thoughts. Let's, let's look at smaller time frames and just see if we can confirm anything with, with these. So, you know, we've got another uh, rejection off the overbought zone here. We are below the 50 on this RSI, which is not good. Um, it's not an ideal placement. Um, as far as this goes on the hourly time frame, I would say that the ball is more in the bear's court. Um, for measuring a fib here from top to bottom. Rejected off the 0.5, kind of went to the 0.618, but couldn't do it. This is a classic like front running of selling. There's so much selling pressure at this around the 618 that it's actually below it. It can't even get to it. Um, I wonder if we measured from there. Not really. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it looks bad. We're rejecting the 236. That that to me is almost condemning um, that we would see at least an extension from here to here, which would bring us down. You know. Not too far. These are, you know, these are small fibs, but we would at least probably come back down this purple line, if not go lower. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. We've got a dramatically lower high, and then we've got a double bottom here so far. There is more volume coming in here, which is nice to see. But if we just continue to go down, the volume's coming in as we're going down. You know, um, I don't know. There's a little volume that came in up here at the top too, but 
that's not necessarily a good thing, man. It's really not. Um, let's see. On the daily, daily time frame. Yeah, there's no volume, not at all. Volume isn't everything. I keep going over volume. I feel like I don't normally talk about volume, but I have recently for whatever reason. Um, you can just see these little spikes in volume. I don't know. I feel like I feel like someone's playing the market, and whenever they're done playing, the market will resume its natural trend, which is going to be to the downside. I do really think that we are going to break this low here, these these double lows here, this double bottom here. We're going to get below this purple line. The purple line's already starting to turn over. It's the 123 MA moving average. It's already starting to kind of like lose its luster. Um, and if and when we get below this purple line on the daily, and then we see this red line here, the 123 RSI, get below the 50 on the daily as well, that will not be good. Um, that'll be, in my opinion, an indication of a new trend, um, which would be to the downside. And that would make sense being that we are at the top of this current bull trend. You know, from here, basically started back in November of 2022, we have been in a bull trend, a very small bull trend for Bitcoin and a very short-lived bull trend, in my opinion, very weak bull trend. Um, we can see that even, you know, like the, the strongest reading that we got was off of this first parabolic move here. And we had some bearish divergence play out, and really we've just had lower highs in the RSI ever since then. With no volume, volumes dying down as we go up, that's not a good thing. You don't want to see that if you're a bull. Um, I wonder from top to bottom here. Yeah, I mean, we, we you know we found resistance at the 1786. It's not too common, um, but we found resistance there. Found support on the 1272. Came back down below it, got you know got rejected off the 1618. Now we're finding resistance at the 1414. I would say that we're getting ready to come down to the 886 or the 786 of this fib, which would again put us around 24,000, 245, something like that. Um, if we were to look at the fib, the like the main fib overall, let's see here. From bottom, is that the bottom? This is the bottom technically. Bottom to top. We're holding the 236. This is actually a, a pretty good look, not gonna lie. This is a pretty good look. Rejecting this 069 is not a good look, but uh, you know, holding holding the 236 is a good look for sure. Um, let's see if we can get another another fib on this fib down down to top. Yeah, we're rejecting the 0.5 from this one, from this price action. I don't like that. I don't think that's good. You really do have to hold the 382, which we are doing right now. That's at seven thousand seven or twenty-seven thousand seven hundred, which we're basically at right now. If the day closes below twenty-seven thousand seven hundred, I would be inclined to believe that we are going to make our way lower. Um, probably make our way down at least to this three eight two, which is at about twenty-four grand again. This number keeps showing up. I really wouldn't be surprised though, man. Like if we, a lot of people are bullish right now. A lot of people really are, and they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying that 24, 20. If 25k breaks, if 26k breaks, then then you know we're in a bear market still. Um, people are saying that. I keep seeing that, and I'm just like, where? Why? Why 25k? Why 26k? There's nothing going on over here. Um, we we do have some bottoms here, I guess. You know, 26k. That that may, that might make sense. Um, what I'm trying to get at is. I think once it's been established that we're in a bear trend, once it's established that this this trend is going for lower lows and lower highs, I think it's going to be more dramatic to the downside. I don't think they're going to be moves like this or like this, but more moves like this, you know, like this one here, like like these ones that we saw in the beginning of the bear market. I think we're going to see moves like that um, take place soon, take place very soon, like the next two weeks, honestly. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my position. I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we went all the way down to this 618 here. Um, we could hold support at the 382. We might, you know, break it, find resistance on it, and then go lower. We might hold it as support, come back up to the 236, and then, you know, go lower. It doesn't have to happen immediately, but I do think that whatever brings us down here, it, it's going to be some pretty quick moves, some pretty bigger moves to the downside. Um, on the daily RSI, we rejected the bullish control zone. That's you know that's not ideal if you're bullish, but it's not bad. We're still above the 50 here, above the 50 here, which is good. We're holding the purple line. Um, the purple line does look to be losing its slope, which is not an ideal situation necessarily. We do have bullish divergence playing out throughout all these tops here, or bearish divergence, I'm sorry. Lower highs in the RSI, higher highs in price. That's not good. Um, if we're looking at the weekly time frame here, bumping it out a little bit more, um, 
I would say, I mean, we were we were overbought for a second. We came out of it. And what we're looking for, what I'm looking for at least, let me see. Wow. We did reject the bullish control zone here, like very much rejected that. Um, I think that it's indicative that, I think this is indicative that the R side definitely wants to go lower along with the price. Um, what we're looking for, what I'm looking for to just kind of validate that this is the beginning of our last leg down in the bear market, that we're starting a five leg impulse wave to the downside. It might look something like this, like one, uh, two, you know, three, four, five, something like that, whatever. Um, and yes, it could end in February of next year. It might end at the beginning of this year. It might end sometime next year or the, the end of this year, or the beginning of next year. But I do expect a five-legged pattern to play out. And truthfully, the third leg would probably be the biggest leg, um, probably. Um, it doesn't have to be. It just can't be smaller than one or five. Um, but what I'm really looking for to confirm that this, that that, this wave C is, is upon us, that we're in the beginning of it right now, what would really confirm that for me is the fact that we were overbought and then we got, and, and if we get below this 50 on the weekly RSI, anytime we've gone from an overbought to below the 50 on the RSI, we've dropped at the smallest, the smallest iteration of a drop we've had was 52%, 52.18 actually. And if we went from, from, from top to bottom, so if we went from top to bottom here to to drop 52%, that would put us below this current low of a cycle. And I think at that point, it would be undeniable that we're still in a bear market. People wouldn't know what to do. A lot of the pros right now are basing this off of time cycles that Bitcoin has because every four years, Bitcoin um, goes through its halving phase. And everyone's like, oh, we can't, we can't be in a bear market still in less than a year away from the halving I think, I think the conviction in that belief is going to be proven wrong. I think that a lot of people are going to be caught off guard that we are in fact making lower lows in, and that the bear market is still on even, even this close to the halving. Um, and the only time, I think the only way to really confirm that to make people believe that is to break that low right down there, to break this line at 15,400 something, 15,460. When that line breaks, um, it'll be undeniable that, that we've been in a bear market this whole time, that we really have been. And and what would convince me, what would, I mean, the fact, I'm already convinced that we're going that low, but what would really be the dagger in the heart for the bulls, what would really um, validate everything I'm saying is if this RSI goes below the 50 line here. If this RSI goes below 50, um, basically right there, um, on a weekly basis, the smallest percentage drop that I would expect would be um, about 50%, 52%, you know, something like this, like basically right below that line. Um, and, you know, I've, I've gone over it in a video before. I'll, I'll just go over it quickly now. We can kind of identify everything um, to show you what I'm talking about because I do get a lot of new viewers. I don't have a lot of, you know, like I don't have a lot of viewers anyway. So if, if you've seen this before, you know, feel free to click off or whatever or, or watch it again if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but here we had an example, right, of a top. That was a top there. And then we had overbought zone, right? And then we went from being overbought. We went from the overbought zone. I don't know what I just clicked on. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to click on that. Um, we went below the 50. This is the key thing. This is the, It's not that we went from being overbought to out of overbought, um, you know, like, like we did here. We went from being overbought. We still held the 50. But this time we broke the 50 we broke it you know that's that's the key go from being overbought to to breaking the 50 and then before we get back above the 50 so clearly here we're above the 50 clearly we found resistance so where was the low from top to bottom uh once we broke that 50 level and the low was 52.27 percent down from the top we saw that okay so let's do the next one um so from the top here you know, while we're in the overbought zone, that would that would make it this one here, um, this top here, to the bottom, the absolute bottom, fifty-five percent. I guess I guess it would be I guess it would be fifty-five percent. So fifty-five point six two percent. This is on the Coinbase chart. I think this the other one that I used was fifty-two point one eight, but close is close enough. You know, um, 
these these are the two smallest drops that Bitcoin's ever seen. And to be fair, these happened while we were still in a bull market. This technically was the beginning of the bear market, but but these happened at more bullish conditions um, than, than we're in now. If we were to confirm that we're going lower than this low here, that that would scare, you know what I mean? Like that a 52% drop from the current high, I'm gonna make this a little bit. Uh, I mean, to put us at this low, this previous low, which we're holding as a higher low for now, that'd be only a 37% drop. If we do a 50% drop, we blow through this low, that's going to scare people. And I, and I really, because I, a lot of people are convinced that we're in a bull market right now. And I think this, breaking this line would convince people that we might not be. Definitely breaking this line down here would convince almost everybody with a brain that we're not in a bull market. So that this was never a bull market move. Um, but that's that's at 36%. I'm expecting at least a 52% move to the downside. Um, I, I think it'll be, and I say at least because I do think it'll be bigger. I do think it'll be bigger. Um, but let's go back in time. Let's keep going back in time. Oversold or overbought here, but it held the 50. That's why we're not measuring this. Um, overbought here, right? And it broke below the 50. It actually came back up above the 50. I would I would even count this as resistance on the 50, technically. I wouldn't count that as a break above the 50. I would say that that's resistance. Um, but let's measure. Let's measure from top to bottom here. Yeah, I mean, that one's 47%. So I guess that is the smallest one. It did break above the 50, but I'm, I'm going to count that as, as a rejection off the 50. And yeah, we've got another 52% drop, you know, and then it, then this was a break above the 50 uh, over here. No, no denying that. Just like like this right here, I would consider that holding the 50 as resistance. You, you broke above the 50 each time here, but I would I would consider that as breaking the or, uh, holding the 50 as resistance. Um, you know, just like I wouldn't consider this breaking the 50, even though it kind of broke the 50 right there. Like if we really want to nitpick it, it went below the 50 and so did this one. Um, I wouldn't count those though. I wouldn't count those in, in this uh, count. I would, I, I want like solid convincing breaks, not, not kind of, kind of broke, but really held it as resistance. Um, so the next one we had was this overbought zone and we went below the 50 here. I would say that this is a break above the 50. You know, we, we tested it as resistance here, came down and broke above it. I would count that as, as a break personally. Um, it did reject the 50 area, but I would, I would, I'm gonna count that one as a break. So let's go, let's go from the top here um, to the bottom in price. I mean, that's a 70% drop there without this little, you know, and I guess this low was higher anyway, so it wouldn't have really mattered. Um, all of these I'm not counting because overbought and we're holding the 50, overbought and we're holding the 50. I wanna get, um, I guess we need to be on a different chart to go back in time further. Um, but yeah, holding the 50, holding the 50. Didn't get into the overbought zone. We broke below the 50, so I'm, I'm not gonna count that. We're only doing getting into the overbought, coming back down, breaking the 50. So right here was one. Um, we had the top here while we're in the overbought zone. Broke the 50. We came back a little bit above the 50, but I'm gonna count that as a rejection as well. The real bottom was down here. That was a 72% drop. So far the biggest drop. Um, overbought here and we broke the 50. For sure we broke the 50. Um, so from the top to the bottom, that's a 75% drop. Uh, you know, didn't, we weren't overbought there. Here we were overbought, broke below the 50. We came back above it. I would almost count this as a rejection off the 50. Um, but you know, maybe we don't need to. Like, let's let's just see, I don't know. It's an 82% drop, I don't know, fair is fair enough. That's that's a pretty solid pump up, you know. And it did get, it's it's at like 54, 55, 50, almost 55. I, I'll count that as a break, yeah. We're, we're not, we don't need to nitpick so much. Um, though arguably, you, if you wanted to really nitpick, you could say it's really a 93% drop or something, I don't know. But, but anytime, the main point is that anytime Bitcoin's done this where where, and if you really, really, really want to get nitpicky with it, like you really, ooh, so bad, you want to be nitpicky, let's, uh, you know, the, the smallest drop that we had, if we really, really want to be nitpicky, the smallest drop we had would have only been 47%, okay? But if we count this as a rejection off the 50, which I, I would consider that a rejection off the 50 personally, um, you know, I guess, I don't know, that's at the 54.5 as well. It's kind of similar to the one we just looked at. I don't know what to do with that. Let's let's count it, 47% of a drop. If the smallest one was a 47% drop, and this was in the beginning of the actual bull market, this was actually after the bear market ended, we had our low in and COVID happened, you know what I mean? Like if this, if that was the drop then, 
Um, and this this was actually before COVID, to be fair. COVID COVID was known about in China, but it wasn't like well, I guess it wasn't really known about in China until December, till over here. It didn't affect America really until here in March. Um, but let's see here. Let's see. If the smallest percentage drop is 47%, a 47% drop would still put us right around the lows over here. And I just, I don't think in Bitcoin's history that we've ever had a low that from the bottom to where the next uh, higher low was, that's only 2%. That's only, let's see, that's like literally 6%. That's a little bit, I've got it, yeah, right right there at 5%, yeah, something like that. Let's see. Let's get it, let's try to get it really close here. Let's be technical. 5.69%, so sensual. We've never had a double bottom that was that close um, in Bitcoin's history, I don't think. Or maybe, ah, no, I'm eating my words. I guess we have had one. We've had one. Um, but this was a slightly lower bottom, to be fair. And the actual low, that's what I'm trying to say, is the actual low, the next bottom that came in after that, I mean, to be fair, it was right here. And that was at 21% above. Um, or, you know, if you, if you wanted to take it a step further and, like, get, like, a, another low, like, I don't know, any of these lows. The, the real low was 21% after, like, the real low was 21% away. Um, if we go here, you know, you've got the real low in, and we've got, okay, this one's, I guess, pretty close, too. Maybe I'm just making things up. Okay, so it can, it could be, it could be uh, this low. I don't think it's gonna go. I don't think it's gonna go this low. I do think it's gonna go lower than that actually. Um, but disregard everything I was just saying. We could, we could have a low where it double bottoms and we have a 5.3 percent difference in the low. That's not really common, especially in my opinion after all this time. Um, I, I feel like you know we're being nitpicky counting that as a low, but I mean technically, technically. It is, so we'll count it. But this was the real low, and that's 24%. You know, I feel like that's that's to me makes more sense, um, and that's that's what I would expect to see. That's if it's been confusing at all. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, I would expect that if we were to low to find a low here, and then we were to find our next low, you know, this would make sense. 26%. That would make sense. But finding a low that's like right here to me I, I don't know it wouldn't make as much sense it could happen it could happen we've seen it before but that's that's not in my opinion something that's conventional um regardless i, I digress regardless if and when this rsi breaks below the 50 from top to bottom at a minimum we could expect to see a 47 percent drop i would think at least personally like a 52 percent drop um something that would send us below these previous lows and honestly I, I this is the minimum expectation that I have. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a 60% drop or a 50, you know, 58% drop somewhere. Somewhere I would be surprised. I would be surprised if from here we just went straight down without checking at all. Um, I mean, before this RSI gets back above the 50, I don't know. I, I would expect. Once it goes below the 50, before it gets back above the 50, I would expect at least a lower low than this. It could, and definitely in my opinion, will go lower than that even over time. But we could have bullish moves that take the RSI above the 50 or around it. You know, it. There, who really knows? I'm talking about things that are months away that that we have no price action to base it off of. So the only thing that I'm trying to say is, anytime we've seen this relationship with the RSI where it goes from being overbought to below the 50, we've seen dramatic dumps, and being that we are experiencing a bull trap right now, in my opinion, this is a bull trap. Um, there's no volume coming in at all to save the day. There's no bullish action to, to coming in to save the day. We rejected this area where we closed and opened already on these days. If we're looking at the hourly, um, you know, rejecting that same area. We have bearish engulfing candles. Volume's picking up as we're coming down. The most volume that we saw was over here at the high where most of the candle was a wick. To me, this is bearish, man. And and to top it all off, to put a cherry on all of it, this happened over the weekend, over Memorial Day weekend, when no volume was being had. Um, traditional markets were not trading. It it just it looks it looks so so prime for for what we've had the last two times. Just like a nice dump to the downside. Um, and I think it's going to be more dramatic. I think it's going to be more dramatic than these ones. These all these moves here, we've basically just been moving sideways since uh, since March. And I think. We are about to get our move, our first move that actually validates one direction or the other. 
I'm personally leaning toward the downside. We have lower highs, lower lows, no volume coming in when we do move up. Um, all the volume comes in when we move down, but you know, I could be wrong. Um, we are in a good position right now with the RSI on the daily time frame. And to be fair, we aren't in the worst position on the weekly time frame, but rejecting the bullish control zone is not a good thing. Um, and I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for this 50 to break. And when that 50 breaks, I will, you'll, you'll hear it from me first for sure that, that we are definitely going to find new lows. I'm already convinced that we're going to find new lows, but doing that, breaking this 50 would... For me, that would that would just vindicate everything. That would validate it. So I'm waiting for that. Until then, you know, I guess we could watch. We can keep on checking these ribbons. Uh, I'll keep you posted with this. The ribbon right now is looking to bullishly cross. The last time that we had a bullish cross, to be fair, was, I, you know, arguably back here. Arguably it was back in May of 2019. Um, and we went a little bit higher over the coming weeks. This was in the middle of a nice bull trend. We did pitter-patter for quite a while. Yes, we crossed down, but I would call this a false cross. Really, the last time we crossed, to put it frankly, was the start of the bull market. It was. And if we're crossing now, if price can maintain above this ribbon and we are crossing now, if we can get a bullish cross, um, that would be that would you know that would be very counter to everything that I've been saying about being bearish. Um, the last time that we had a, a bullish cross, it was the start of the bull market. The last time we had a bearish cross was, you know, in the beginning of the bear market. So it's you know this this is significant stuff. But to be fair, to be fair, this this candle's all weird by the way. I don't know why the index does this. If we, if we do it, if we look it up on the uh, on Coinbase, it's not a green candle. It's a red candle. Um, Still a similar look with, with the uh, ribbon, but we would have to get this yellow line to cross above the red one, which isn't that far away. Price would just have to maintain it, its current price for like the next three weeks, maybe maybe even one more week. But I think I think like three weeks from now, you know, this week, that week, three weeks here, the week like in the middle of June, if we could maintain prices around here, even a little bit lower would be fine. Then we'd get a bullish cross, and I, you know, I might start talking more bullish things. But for right now, I am bearish. This is not crossed yet. We are not getting any volume, any follow through with price. We're just generating lower highs. We totally could get a fake, uh, you know, a fake cross. We've seen it before, and in the midst of a very bullish run, this was obvious that this was a fake cross. I don't know. We are in the midst right now of like sideways action, and normally when you move sideways, you do disrespect the ribbon more. So it. You know, I don't know, but we'll see. If we get below this ribbon, that's really going to be condemning. Um, not just because we're below the ribbon, but because the RSI would drop below the 50 as well. And yeah, that's I'm, that, those are the things I'm looking for. On the daily for the ribbon, we are in a bearish posturing right now. We are holding the ribbon as support. The ribbon is pointing up right now, but it is still crossed to the downside. Um, I'm holding my breath. If I'm a bull, if I'm a bear, I am. I'm probably also holding my breath. I don't know. You know, I, it's it's hard to say right now. I would. I would just looking at the price action. I would fall under the impression that this is a bull trap. That we are going to fall down faster and harder than we did coming up. Especially when we see volume coming in as we're dropping. That that'll be indicative. Um, but until, you know, until we get a little bit lower, until we're below 27.3 on the daily, until we're below uh, 26,000 on the weekly, um, you know, it's it's not looking completely abysmal, to be fair. It's not looking completely abysmal. My, my bias, my personal bias is to the downside. It is abysmal for sure. Um, but anything can happen, and anything can happen in a very short amount of time as well. So we are holding this ribbon as support right now. We bounced right off it. After having a bearish engulfing candle with a good bit of volume, you can't really see it, but there is volume. Um, those are not clean, by the way, babe. None of those are clean. You could you could clean them if you want. I don't care. It, it's not like it's going to disrupt anything. Babe, there's clean knives in the... right there. Oh, are you you're trying to cut the cake? Yeah. You just use one of those knives. Use my knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um... Uh, anyways, anyways, you know, I think I've said everything I need to say. I think we're there. It, it does kind of look bullish right now. It does have a little, little hope, not going to lie. Um, 
but just with my overall bias and just with how this daily looks to me, I'm I'm the fact that it happened over the weekend with no volume, and I very much do believe that we are in this giant ABC pattern to the downside, um, and we're starting this this C wave right now. Let me see, you know, we're in this giant ABC. I really do believe we are. So I'm I'm bearish. I'm just by default I'm bearish, um, and the C technically would be just as big, but I don't think. I don't know if it's if it's just as big as wave A that could put us you know in the middle of next year down the slope. I don't think that's going to happen. I think this C will be shorter than wave A. It's not common, but it's not against the rules. It can still happen. Um, but I do firmly believe that we are in this trend right now. So I am not I'm not really looking to the upside too much. Um, if we do go higher, I think that I, I don't think that we'd get above uh, thirty thousand. Um, we could go a little bit higher, but I doubt it. There'd, there'd be a lot of good things that happened if we went higher, um, but we'll talk if and when that happens, you know. And if not, if and when it goes below these critical areas, which Bitcoin is at a very critical point right now to make a decision, um, if and when that happens, I will definitely make a video letting you know what what I think is going on. And I could be wrong. You know, I really could be wrong. Price could keep going up. This ribbon could look good. The daily ribbon could start crossing up. That would look good too, proving this to be some kind of false hope for the bears. It could. It really could. And then we'll, we'll talk about invalidating the whole ABC pattern that I have uh, that I believe that we're in right now, um, the zigzag. But, but you know, until then, I'm bearish. I am, I am, I am definitely pessimistically bearish. Um, I hope everybody has a good day. Take care. If you like the video, if you want to see more, leave a like, subscribe. Um, I wanted to talk about more stuff, but I kind of got carried away with Bitcoin here. Um, just more of the same stuff that I've been saying now for weeks that you know I'm really looking for. Uh, the real thing that I'm looking for is those ribbons to stay crossed to the downside. And I'm really truthfully looking for on the weekly. I'm looking for this RSI to get below the 50. If and when that happens, it's... It's just all over, man. It's really all over. Um, but we've got we've got some weeks before that can happen. Um, we've got time. There is hope for the bulls right now. So you know, I don't want to I don't want to just say like I'm right right now. Um, but if we get below that 50, I'm definitely going to be blowing my own horn for sure. Um, anywho, take care. Hope you all have have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.